Do you guys remember the year 2008? What's the one thing you remember most about 2008? For me, it's not the global financial crisis. No, no, no. It's not even the 2008 Summer Olympics. Nor is it the time that one Hawaiian Muslim guy won the presidential election. Guys, it's not even, believe it or not, when an extra second was added to end the year. And it's definitely not the time, most surprising of all, the time that online activist group Anonymous initiated Project Chanology after a leaked interview with Tom Cruise by the Church of Scientology was published on YouTube and the Church of Scientology issued a copyright infringement claim and in response sympathizers of the online activist group took to the streets to protest outside the church while the church's website and centers were getting DOS attacks, phone line nukes, and black faxes. Nope. What I remember most about the year 2008 was all the awful, dreadful, Terrible Joker impressions from Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. So yeah, we're talking about The Dark Knight, and I know you probably just rolled your eyes and thought, Really? The Dark Knight? First you do The Science of the Lambs, and now The Dark Knight? How basic are you? How about analyzing some cultured cinema? Honestly, I would love to. Anyway, as you all know, The Dark Knight is the sequel to 2005's Batman Begins, a film that not only reinvented Batman, but the whole superhero genre entirely. Everything that followed was a diluted version of its approach. Hollywood took the wrong lessons from it. They chose to make every superhero movie, or really any franchise reboot then out, dark and gritty even if it didn't suit the material, and they ignored all the philosophy and thoughtful thematic exploration that made it interesting in the first place. They took the style, but left out the substance. This is a video for another time though. Plus, there was a little thing called... <laughs> Before I get to what I believe is the best shot in the Dark Knight, we gotta do some Philosophy 101 first. Philosophy. We have to understand Batman and the Joker both, not just as characters, but as symbols. What do they represent? So let's start with Batman, since he's the star of the show. The first thing people might notice about Batman, whether they realize it or not, aside from all those sexy chins he's had over the years and the undie-dropping voices, is that he's a deontologist. No, that has nothing to do with teeth or Dion Cole. It means Batman is not a utilitarian. What's a utilitarian? Utilitarianism is an ethics theory that has to do with maximizing happiness and well-being. This means for Batman to be a utilitarian, he would have to kill his enemies so that they wouldn't kill anyone else in the future. As we all know, Batman has only one rule, do not kill. Batman has this rule because he believes it would make him as bad as his enemies and that it would take him down an even darker path he fears he wouldn't come back from, meaning death or insanity. A deontologist, on the other hand, would say killing is wrong no matter what. So in the case that his enemy is killed later by one of their other enemies or in some accident or by natural causes or even in a slimmer chance they have a change of heart or something, Batman can say, good thing I didn't kill them and have blood on my hands. His philosophy is that of Immanuel Kant, a German philosopher of the Enlightenment era who believed moral actions must be applied universally and that people should be treated individually as ends in themselves, not as a means to an end. He also believed in the autonomy of reason, that logical and rational beings are able to self-govern. So by having a moral code, Batman thus becomes a symbol of order. Using his intellect, strength, and wealth, he wants to protect people from criminals by delivering those criminals to the proper authorities for legal prosecution. Sure, Gotham is corrupt, but Gotham being corrupt doesn't make the system it's built on inherently corrupt. The system can be utilized effectively and ethically when ran correctly, when inspired or forced to face its inefficacy, its incompetency, and insufficiency. By having a moral code, thus becoming a symbol of order, this also makes Batman a symbol of hope. Through his actions, the people of Gotham are given inspiration to be better, to hold their city accountable, to overcome adversity, and to restore order, a sign that Gotham can rise up and stand up for itself. This also makes Batman a pragmatic idealist. But this all comes at a price. The price of escalation. For there to exist a Batman, there must exist its opposite. One extreme response forces the response of another extreme force. And that's when the Joker comes in. I'll spare you a Joker laugh. The Joker is the inverse, the opposite, the shadow version of Batman. If Batman is a symbol of justice, morality, and order, Joker is a symbol of injustice, immorality, and chaos. If Batman believes in meaning, the Joker believes in nihility. Oh, that must be exhausting. 
If you don't believe in purpose, there's no logical choice but to believe in nothing. And if you believe in nothing, then you can't believe in justice, morality, and order. And if you don't believe in justice, morality, and order, then you believe there's no meaning and everything is random. And if you believe there's no meaning and everything is random, then you believe that any efforts towards justice, morality, and order are ultimately absurd and futile. A joke. This is the Joker's goal, to communicate this message. Stop trying to tame what can't be tamed. One of the best scenes in the entire Dark Knight trilogy is the scene in the hospital with the Joker and Harvey Dent. It encompasses everything you need to know about the Joker. He says he's an agent of chaos, aka an advocate for disorder. He says he's like a dog chasing cars, aka motivated by the pursuit for the sake of the pursuit without any regard for the consequences. His philosophy is that of Friedrich Nietzsche, the 19th century German philosopher who was known for critiquing traditional morality and religion, proposing the concept of the Ubermensch, which is somebody who creates their own values and lives beyond conventional moralities. It's also important to note that he went insane. Now to what I believe is the best shot in The Dark Knight. The context for the scene is Batman has just showcased his Kantian influence by saving the Joker after throwing him off the tower just after the Joker showcased his Nietzschean influence by expecting the people on the two fairies to kill each other since he believes in severe situations people will abandon their morals to reveal their true depraved nature. Except Batman doesn't realize the Joker has corrupted Harvey Dent. As I did with my video on the best shot in the Science of the Lambs, in the description you can watch that, here is the shot cut together. Uh, 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 you, you just couldn't let me go, could you? An unstoppable force meets an immovable object. You truly are incorruptible, aren't you? Huh? Of self-righteousness. And I won't kill you, because you're just too much fun. <laughs> I think you and I are destined to do this forever. Maybe we could share one. You know, they'll be doubling up the rate this city's inhabitants are losing their minds until their spirit breaks completely. Real Harvey Dent. Huh? And all the heroic things he's done. Battle for Gotham's soul in a fist fight with you. Oh, you need an ace in the hole. Mine's Harvey. I took Gotham's white knight, and I brought him down to our level. Is like gravity. All it takes is a little push. <laughs> So what really makes this shot the best shot of the film isn't just Heath Ledger's brilliant performance and Nolan's poignant dialogue, it's what the shot represents. While the Joker hangs upside down, the camera itself starts to tilt upside down to show the Joker upright, even though he is, in fact, still upside down. What's the significance of this? Other than to show that Batman and Joker are two sides of the same coin, two broken loners with trauma on antithetical philosophical missions I explained before, it's to show the shift in power. Batman thinks he's won, that he's still in control, since being upside down is typically a visual of helplessness or vulnerability. But once the camera makes the Joker upright, the Joker alludes to Batman what he's done to Harvey Dent, which now presents the Joker as the one who's won, the one who's in control. Well, that's that in a nutshell. If you disagreed my choice for the best shot in The Dark Knight, what do you think it is and why? Thanks for watching and thanks for watching.